Hello Sector Watchers, welcome to the show. This is the 176th episode of Sector Spotlight for Tuesday the 23rd of May and I'm recording this on Monday the 22nd after the close of the US markets. My name is Julius de Kempenaar and I'm presenting to you from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. In this episode of Sector Spotlight we're going to take a look at sector rotation in depth, um, slicing the market down into three groups, offensive, defensive, sensitive and uh, a little bit more special attention for the groups inside the technology sector and some of the individual stocks. No time to waste, ladies and gentlemen, this is Sector Spotlight. For this week's review of sector rotation, I'm going to take the approach of the um, grouped sectors. So we're going to look at the offensive, defensive and sensitive sectors. And we're going to have the weekly and the daily RRGs side by side and see if we can find a common denominator, if we can find um, a narrative that, that tells the story about the market. So let's kick off with the offensive sectors, and that's uh, discretionary, financials, real estate, and materials. And here's the weekly RRG, and on the right-hand side you see the daily. And you can see that they're quite similar in the fact that there are three sectors inside lagging, and there's one inside leading, and they're the same on the weekly and the daily. So the consumer discretionary sector is the only sector in the offensive group that's inside the leading quadrant. And even there it's not doing fantastic because if you look at the weekly tail, it's, uh, it's, it's inside leading, but look at how that came down over the last 10 weeks. And if you look at the daily, you can see that it recently picked up, uh, rallied into leading, but over the last three days, two days, it started to already roll over again inside um, leading. So it's not overly enthusiastic, it's not a fantastic sector, neither on the weekly, neither on the daily RRG. The, the other ones, financials, real estate and materials, they're all inside the lagging quadrant. And um, financials picking up uh, inside the lagging quadrant, but it's, it's at a very low um, RS ratio reading. Uh, you see that same picture here, so here's that daily tail. Let me highlight that for you. So here's that daily tail. And this, this improvement is causing that hiccup over the last two weeks. So this is about two weeks of um, trading, 10 trading days that reflects the last bit of that end tail here on financials on the weekly. And that sort of corresponds with that improvement that you see right here. Uh, nevertheless, it's still inside lagging. It's not a fantastic tail. And um, if you look at materials, then it had a little bit of hiccup inside um, lagging uh, on the weekly RRG. But that, and that's this one here, but it already started to deteriorate further uh, last week. And we can have kind of the same story. That's probably the worst one here is real estate, because that's completely confirming that lack of momentum, that lack of relative strength that we're seeing on that weekly RRG. So, um, the story here is that the market is still out of offensive sectors. So the market is avoiding offensive sectors, not a lot of money pouring into those sectors. The best one of these four, probably consumer discretionary, but still not super fantastic. And if we do a little ranking here on the table when we click on the percentage change we can see um, how the performances over in this case the last 10 weeks of all these sectors are compared to the s p 500 and you see the consumer discretionary is at 7.2 it's a little better than the s p 500 but only by 20 basis points and if we do the same on the daily we can see a similar thing it's 2.3 versus 1.3 it's not fantastic so um in this group, market is not strongly moving into offensive sectors. And that is what you would like to see, what you would expect to see um, when there is a strong rally in the S&P 500 going on. Let's move on to the defensive sectors. Because there is a, uh, there is a very interesting picture right there. Now, look at this. So here we've got the defensive sectors. That is healthcare, utilities, and staples. And... They are very close together. 
If you look at the, um, at the weekly ROG, you can see that they're all inside improving, but utilities and staples have sharply hooked back. They're now moving back down towards the lagging quadrant, and the only one that's still picking up is uh, healthcare. But if you look at the uh, reading on the RS ratio scale, it's the weakest and it has, it's going through a, um, an improvement in terms of relative momentum and only very, very small, very marginally uh, in terms of relative strength. And if we take that to the daily RRG, then you can see how this is a very clear image. All these, group, all these sectors, staples, healthcare utilities, are all rapidly moving into the lagging quadrant, or they're already inside the lagging quadrant and heading deeper into it. So with healthcare picking up a little bit here, but the daily tail uh, pointing sharply into the lagging quadrant, there is a good chance that, that the weekly tail on, on, uh, on this ROG here will, will follow the tails of utilities and staples. Um, no matter how I look at this, this is not a strong group. So this is not where the market is investing. We're actually, we're moving out of defense. Um, and that is interesting because that is something that you would expect when there is a strong uh, overall market, when the S&P is rallying, when the uh, S&P is going into a, uh, into a stronger period, you would expect the market to move out of these defensive sectors. This is, these, this is the risk off uh, area of the market. And people are moving out of that risk off area. So if you're moving out of risk off, where are you going? You're going to risk on, right? Or at least something with a little bit more risk. Now we've already seen the offensive sectors. That's not very good either. So um, the third group, the economically sensitive sectors, they're holding the key uh, of the direction of the S&P at the moment, if you ask me. And that's what we see here. Here is, <clears throat> here is the same setup. So we've got the weekly ROG on the left for the what we call sensitive sectors and the daily on the right. And here you can also see that these images are quite similar. We've got energy and industrials inside lagging, both on the weekly and also on the daily ROG. We've got energy and industrials inside the lagging quadrant. And we've got technology and communication services inside the leading quadrant. Um, interesting to see that um, especially communication services and technology are now leading the market and we can do that we can see that by ranking them on uh, the percentage change and you can see how strong these two sectors are compared to the S&P 500 um, communication services picked up 13 percent over the last 10 weeks versus 7% for the S&P 500. And tech is up 10.2. And if we do a similar exercise on the daily, it's 5.2, 5 4.4 versus 1.3 for the S&P 500. <clears throat> um, what is the main takeaway of, of this assessment? Um, so market is not moving into, not, not really moving into offensive sectors. I, that's a pretty clear conclusion that we can draw from these RRGs. Um, if, if that were the case, if the market is strongly moving into offensive sectors, we wanna see at least two or three of these tails inside improving and at a strong RRG heading, meaning that a moving uh, between zero and 90 degrees. That's not the case right here. The market is moving out of defense. That is a very clear signal. So um, not necessarily moving into offensive, but very clearly moving out of defense. And then so the sensitive sectors are, I, I wrote about it already and, I, and we talked about it in the sector spotlight. They're kind of holding the key. And the interesting thing is that technology obviously is the heavyweight sector. And that's inside the leading quadrant and that's doing really well. And the communication services sector is definitely also picking up. And, and obviously there's a couple of very big stocks inside the communication services sector that can help carry the S&P 500 higher. So all in all, um, market not moving into offense, clearly moving out of defense. They're kind of offsetting each other. 
And the message that's coming from Sensitive is that we're definitely moving into tech and into communication services. Energy seems to be picking up, albeit in a very early stage, and the market is still avoiding industrial stocks. So let's take a look at what that means um, for some individual stocks in those sectors uh, and the S&P 500 itself. Let's dive a little bit deeper into the technology sector. And what we see here is I've got on the left hand side, I've got the weekly RRG for the groups that are inside the technology sector. And on the right hand side, we've got that same universe of groups, but then on a daily RRG. And the benchmark here is XLK, that's the technology sector itself. And what we can see is that if we look at the weekly RRG, that uh, DJUSCR, and that is the Computer Hardware Index, is inside leading, and uh, USSW is the Software Index, that's also inside the leading quadrant. And SSC, that Semiconductors, has just moved out of leading into the weakening quadrant. These are the stronger groups inside the technology sector. This whole group here, this cluster of groups, uh, that's computer services, electronic equipment, electrical component, telecommunications. That is all uh, inside the lagging quadrant. Um, oh, and oh, by the way, I have ticked off the renewable energy equipment index because that is, um, it's inside this, this sector. Um, uh, but we, it, the problem is that from a legacy point of view on stock charts, we have the sectors based on the GICS, Global Industry Classification System uh, Convention, and the industries, so the ones that you're looking at here, are based on ICB, that's the Industry Classification Benchmark uh, Convention. And these are very often the same, but not always. And when you are trying to slice and dice groups, you will run into problems. And the Renewable Energy Equipment Index is one of those groups that is uh, sort of conflicting uh, in both classification systems. Um, by the way, we are working on getting all of that aligned and moving to uh, either GSCS or the ICB, ICB classification so that we can make a proper a listing of all industries underneath a sector without having the conflicts between the two different classification systems. That's work in progress. I hope that we can fix that um, very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. For the time being, I'm leaving that energy equipment index out of this equation. If we look at the daily uh, RRGs, then we can see that uh, software and computer hardware are going through a little pause, so they're going lower on the RS momentum scale. And that dip here is causing those weekly tails to move more or less flat. I'm gonna wait and see how this deterioration continues uh, or whether they can turn back up and keep those weekly tails inside the leading quadrant. The Semiconductor uh, group, which has obviously been one of the stronger ones leading the technology sector higher, uh, predominantly by uh, NVIDIA, NVDA, um, is inside weakening, but you can see that there is, it's moving towards lagging, but we can always see that, that rotation back up to leading. So it's a little bit early for that, but the, the daily tail is definitely showing the improvement here. So we got that that conflict of interest between the weekly and the daily RRG tails. Uh, we're gonna wait and see who wins it. If you look at the individual charts for some of the major uh, semiconductor stocks, I wouldn't be surprised if we can see, if we will see a uh, rotation of that tail back up. The, um, the, the other group uh, of stocks uh, 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 that, that are clustering, they're kind of the same. So you got that same group here in lagging, and you can see that group here, that cluster moving uh, there as well. And then the odd one out here is the um, um, telecommunication equipment, USCT, uh, on the daily looking very good. 
on the weekly not so much. So I want to concentrate on these groups here. So it's computer hardware, software, and semiconductors. And if we bring that up on various RRGs, so here is the RRG, and this is, um, we're looking at S&P 500 stocks. So in this group, there's only two stocks in this sector for the computer hardware, that's Apple and HP. And if we look at the weekly tail, then we can see that Apple is, is very close to the benchmark. Not a surprise because it's a very big chunk of the benchmark. Uh, and moving into leading or almost static, HP is picking up. On the daily, you can see a rapid weakening of Apple uh, and, as well as HP. The, um, the conclusion about this is that because this, again, this is not a very good alignment because this group here has a lot more stocks than just Apple and HP. Um, so we're kind of comparing, um, it's not really apples and oranges, but it's not really good either. Uh, because this, this is a, um, this is a open universe and it's a limited universe. There could be many more stocks here, but because we're looking at the S and P 500 members, only HP and Apple remain. Uh, the conclusion is that inside this group, there are other stocks that are showing a better performance and better relative trends than both Apple and HP at the moment. Uh, if I am going to look at an individual stock here, it has to be Apple. Uh, and if we look at the, the, the price chart of Apple, then you can see that it is pushing against that overhead resistance between 175 and 180. And the bottom of the range is around 130, uh, 135. And I think that is probably a, a good reflection of what's happening in the market. So the leading stock in this sector is uh, is still it's it's still good. I mean, this is not a bad chart. Don't get me wrong, uh, but it's got it's it's running into trouble. And if you look at the relative strength, it's just kind of going okay-ish sideways. Um, from a trading point of view, it means that there are other stocks. Uh, call them satellites. So if if Apple is is the big one, the big planet, or the or, or the sun, or however you want to call it, uh, there are some satellites around it that are just having a faster pace at the moment. So there is better opportunities there. They're just not in the S&P 500 at the moment. Nevertheless, Apple is still showing a strong chart. It's pushing against resistance and there's no doubt about it that when Apple breaks above that high and goes to new highs, it's definitely gonna give a good uh, sign, a good impulse uh, and a good contribution to the performance of the S&P 500 as well as the technology sector as a whole. Let's move to uh, the other group that's doing really well, that's the software index. So here are the stocks that are inside the software index. And I've put them now, not against the technology sector, but against the software index itself. And what we see here um, is that the, the weekly tails are turning back up. So um, you had Microsoft in leading, just, just leading the charge for the last couple of weeks. If you look at Microsoft uh, on the daily, where is Microsoft, so it's right here, you can see that it is, is going back upwards. So that is, that is an interesting move from Microsoft. It's, it's kind of conflicting with the, the, the weekly tail here. Uh, for Microsoft, which is in leading, but has, has hooked back down. Obviously, this is a, a massive big stock inside that sector, so it's good that it's turning back up on the daily and that it's still holding up inside leading. There are some other names that, are, um, that, that, that maybe should have our attention. And if I look at the daily tails here, then I'm looking at uh, now NOW, that's, that's one that interests me. So service now, look at that tail, how that is pushing um, back up and, and moving into the leading quadrant. And when I look for the NOW tail right here, I can see that's inside lagging, but it's starting to pick up. Um, with this whole group already being strong against the technology sector, this is a stock that I am interested to look at. And here is the price chart of NOW and look how that is coming out 
of a big base on the price chart. And if we look at the um, relative strength line, and this is the RRG line against um, XLK, uh, not exactly what we were looking at uh, on the RRG, but it's, it's good enough for now. It shows you how it's starting to improve um, versus its sector. Uh, and, and obviously also versus the, um, uh, the software uh, group index, the industry index. But what I like, what I, what's really the confirmation of the improvement for uh, ServiceNow is the break uh, from this big base pattern. And I mean, with a little bit of fantasy, you could even see uh, an inverted head and shoulders here with the left shoulder and the big head could be a double bottom and the right shoulder, and then we've broken uh, that neckline. Um, and let's do a quick calculation for the target. So that's roughly 500. And let's this be a 350. So that's $150 gain from the breakout level, which would be 480. So do, let's do very conservative. Let's do 500. That, that'll, that puts the target around 650 for this stock, which is very close to the all time high, which makes total sense if you come out of a base like this. So um, inside the software industry, software industry really good uh, compared to the sector. And then a stock like ServiceNow is doing really well versus uh, its industry and obviously also versus um, the sector index. Uh, a few other names here in this group that you can look at would be uh, CRM, Oracle, uh, FICO. FICO has actually uh, already had a very big rally, so I'm not really into chasing that, but it's, it's doing really well. It's holding up that sector very well. And basically this whole, this whole cluster here uh, is worth a look um, for potential positions in your portfolio or as a potential trade. Let's take a look at the third group here, and that's the semiconductors. That's obviously a very uh, important group inside the technology sector. We've got the same setup. So we've got the weekly uh, tails for the semiconductor stocks on the left, and we've got the dailies on the right. And if we look here uh, through all of these names, there are inside this group, because AMD and, and NVIDIA obviously been driving the market. They're the big ones. Uh, but if you look at the price charts of those two, they're, they're, they've, they've, they've had a massive run already. So what I'm looking at is stocks that have um, still some, some fuel in the tank, still have some legs to, to move and to run. And the two tails that I like here on this uh, weekly RRG are MU and LRCX, and let me highlight them here. So I've got Micron, Micron Technology. Look at how that tail is moving uh, up there. And let's put it on the daily as well. So here is Micron, and you can see how that is. It's hard to see, but here you can probably see it better, how that is moving back up towards, it's starting to move. It's inside, it moved from lagging back into weakening, but the most important thing is that's got that strong RRG heading between 0 and 90 degrees that's confirming the tail that we see on the weekly. So that's a, that's a stock that I really want to look at the chart for. And then the second one here is LRCX, LAM Research. If you look at that tail that's picking up, it's moving into that leading quadrant, it's very close to crossing over to leading. And if we look at the, um, the daily tail here for LRCX for LAM Research, that is what really is the kicker, the, the icing on the cake, if you wish, is that we've seen that initial rally and it's now it moved into weakening and it's now hooking sharply back up into the leading quadrant, confirming that weekly tail. And if we look at the individual charts for, uh, let's start with Micron here, you can see another break from a very big base. So here we've had that massive decline coming down from uh, 95 all the way to below 50, yeah. traded in a range between 50 and 65. And then last week we broke out of that range above 65 and we're holding up well today. Um, obviously this last bar is just today's pricing, but if you look at the relative strength versus the, te the technology sector, it's starting to pick up and starting to move in that improving uh, quadrant uh, with quite some good potential to the upside for uh, for Micron. I, if I look at this chart, I would say I would label the first resistance level only around 75. So that's a decent uh, upside move that we still have left there for Micron. 
Um, then the other one was LRCX. Uh, let me put the chart here. Here it is. LRCX, look at that tail moving right up there. Uh, and look at the price chart that we have with LRCX. Again, one of these big, big decline, nice big base. Um, call it a head and shoulders if you wish. Doesn't really matter. We, we, we've taken out a very important overhead resistance level around 540. We jumped to 585 last week. Uh, that means that there is a bit of downside risk here. But I would say that the way I would approach this is to look for a setback. Uh, and then pick up uh, the pace again. So any decline here in terms of price would be a buying opportunity to get in at a lower level. Uh, the RRG lines are definitely improving here, making it an interesting stock uh, to watch. So we've broken down that technology sector into software, hardware, and um, semiconductors, and picked uh, a few stocks, uh, individual stocks out of these groups that have the potential to move further in the weeks ahead. And let me wrap it up with a quick look at the S&P 500 itself, uh, SPY in this case. And we've got the weekly on the left, daily on the right. Um, we've seen this chart many, many times and, and we've described that trading range in which we are and it looks as if we're going out on the upside. Um, if you look at the daily, it's a little bit more pronounced. We can see that um, three days, so that was Thursday, Friday. Thursday we broke, Friday we're holding. Today, Monday, we're holding as well. Uh, and that seems to be um, playing out here on the weekly as well. So that range, um, we're going out on the upside. First target here would be 426. And um, give it a little bit of leeway, I think we should hold above 415 in order for this break uh, to remain valid, if you wish. Um, otherwise, we go back into the trading range. Not super negative, but the upside potential will be gone by then. Um, obviously, taking out that previous high, 426, 427, that's the key level. If that is gone, then we're going to attack the new, uh, we, we, can, we can make a new attack uh, to get back to all time highs around 470 that we've seen back in December 2021. Um, all in all, at least a short term outlook for the S&P 500 seems to be getting more bullish uh, as we speak. And it's driven by the communication services and the technology sectors as we've discussed earlier in the program. And this wraps up Sector Spotlight for this week. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please remember, Sector Spotlight airs every Tuesday from 10.30 to 11 a.m. Eastern. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week, same time, same place.